Welcome to another video uh, in the uh, electrical circuits uh, um, series. Uh, this one is going to be focused on Kirchhoff's voltage law. Uh, earlier we had a video on KCL and if you haven't seen that that would be a good one to start with and now we're going to talk about KVL. Now um, KVL is, is the law is relatively simple. It says if you have a circuit uh, such as um, such as the one I'm going to draw, let's say simple voltage source, maybe some resistance, something relatively simple to demonstrate the concept. Let's say this is five volts, this is ten ohms, um, twenty ohms, and forty ohms. Uh, K, KVL basically says that any any time I start at any point in the circuit, let's say starting here, and I traverse around the path where the wires and the components are, and I come back to this point, I got a loop. And uh, the Kir Kirchhoff's law strictly says summation of all the voltages around this loop add up to zero. So for example, we're going to have a voltage that is over here. Let's call it V1. And it's important to go in a sequence just to not to miss anything. V2 and then plus and minus V3. So if I sum all of those, it adds up to zero. Now I don't have to necessarily do it around this loop. If I were to choose, I could go around this bigger loop, which includes the other loop, or I can do it around here. We only write, we only write, we only need to write equations for meshes. Mesh is defined, mesh is defined as a loop that does not include another loop. So in this particular case, I'm only going to have two meshes. One here and one here. And I use the current to identify them. We've got an I1 and I2. Why didn't I do the bigger loop? The bigger loop includes other loop, therefore it's not a mesh. So we only write equations for meshes. And the way we do that, we put these uh, arrows that shows which direction we think the current is flowing. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be correct, we just got to be consistent. As a matter of fact, as we look at the process we go to we use this technique to solve problems we always um, try to go in the same direction in this case would be clockwise going around clockwise so in this case I have two meshes and only two meshes even though I have three loops and mesh one is I I'll refer to it as I1 mesh two as an I2 now let's go to take a look at the process we're going to go through um, KVL is important because that allows us to create a technique called mesh current method to analyze circuits. So KCL, KVL is the law, we apply the law, the method of analysis is referred to informally as mesh current method. Now, as we talk, we will use the two names interchangeable when they see use, use KVL, they really are talking about using mesh current method. What we do, we write this, so what happens that uh, the whole thing is based on the idea that in any given mesh, some of the voltages in that mesh is equal to zero. Now, what we do, instead of writing in terms of voltage, we write the equation of V is equal I times R to make sure the function we end up with is actually in terms of I because in each one of these loops as we go around, there's only one I. So, so let's go through the three, it's basically three step, much like the KCL case. You identify all the meshes. Remember loops that do not include loops are called meshes. So, so those are the only one we're gonna do. For each one of the meshes, step two, for each one of the meshes, we sum, write sum of voltage equation in terms of current, um, and then uh, solve the system of equation to find all the I's uh, in the circuits. So let's say, let's say um, uh, we are doing this and we're trying to find all the currents in the circuit. 
uh, what we're gonna do we got a for first step if you if you look at the steps provided here the first step is to identify the meshes we did it there's two of them and then step two is for every one of those meshes to write the sum of voltages so let's do i'm going to do it step by step for a loop uh, one uh, for mesh one so we can can use to how it looks and then we're going to actually um, for two we're going to do it uh, without having to go through every step at a time and most of the time you get used to when you get used to this process you jump to the second step so we got a KVL at I1, so the reader knows what we are doing. We are going around this particular loop, and uh, we are uh, in step two. So the equation is going to be, notice we're going to start with V1. V1 is going to be literally I1 times 10 volts. Now we know it's plus to minus because remember resistors are passive devices, which the voltage drops in the direction of current, or another way of thinking about it, the current flows through the positive side of it. So if you do that, uh, before before we go there, we are basically saying sum of voltages must be equal to zero. So V1 plus V2 plus V3 must be equal to zero. Now, what is V1? Well, V1 is gonna be basically R times I, which is 10 times I1. So we just write that 10 times I1. V2 is a little more tricky because what is the current in this resistor 20 ohm we know we got to have a 20 ohm now the question is what is the current that flows here if you look at it you got i1 going this way i1 is flowing this way but i2 is coming back against it so when you write this equation you're going to write it as i1 minus i2 and then now v3 is kind of interesting too because v3 we assumed it was plus and minus but it actually is minus and plus so v3 actually is minus 5 volts so so now we got the first equation. Now once we know how to do this, once we do a KVL at I2, we do not have to go through this first step process to write it. All we have to do is start at any point on the circuit, just walk around. This is 40 and I2, since this is not shared with anybody, the current through here is exactly I2. So we're gonna go 40 I2 plus 20. Now it's interesting because now we are in this loop, we're going in this direction, so it's going to be I2 minus I1. All right, so the next step would be let's clean both of these equations and put them in the system of equations. So if I clean this one, I've got 10 I1 and I've got a 20 I1, so I've got a 30 I1 minus 20 I2 equal to 5. 5 goes to the other side becomes a positive and on the bottom side I've got 60 I2 minus 20 I1. Most of you will have calculators that are capable of solving equations once you get to here the matrix uh, uh, solution for the system of equation. I'm going to manually do it just so we've seen once how to do that. I1 is equal to 3 I2, I can plug that to the equation above, which allows me to write that as 90 I2 minus 20 I2 equals to 5, which means I2 is equal to 5 divided by 70 amps. Once I have that, then I1 is going to be basically 3 times I2, which is equal to 15 over 70. So we solved it, we got the answer. So let's go back and summarize the steps. We identified the meshes. We had two meshes in this case. Then that was step one. Step two, for each mesh, we added all the voltages around, but we wrote it as much as possible in terms of the current I, R equals to V. And then we solved the equation. Really simple, three steps. If as long as you follow those steps, that would be great. That would you will be able to solve this really straightforward with no problem. Just make sure you label everything, so so the reader knows this is KVL for I1, this is KVL for I2. This was written here just to help you uh, follow the process. Most of the time we do not write this and we go directly to this equation. 
And that brings us to the end of the introduction to KVL.